Thank you, sir. Uh, your five-minute call, Jan Logie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's times where I listen to speeches in this house and I do indeed feel as if I'm living on another planet. I've just heard the member for Mungakeke, and I do believe he is living on planet Key, that same planet that has no toilets, that has nobody who needs to clean the toilets. His is a different world indeed from the world I live in and the world that many people I speak to live in. I want to speak today about inequality and how it's been grown by this government and the agenda that they have to benefit the wealthy of this country. And I think I want to point to the latest um, NBR New Zealand Rich list of announcements from a couple of weeks ago that saw an increase from 2012 of $3.5 billion in total minimum net worth amongst the rich listers in this country who their, now their combined value is worth $47.9 billion. And I think it's also worth noting that there are no women, no individual women in that top 10. And we've been fed this message from this government and previous governments that, well, these people at the top, they've, they've earned this, they've contributed so much to New Zealand that, you know, they are worth this money. And I'd like to point them to um, some re U UK research that was quoted in the um, book Inequality in New Zealand Crisis by Max Rashbrook, which tells us that looks at different return on investment from different um, work and saying that um, British researchers have found that high paid investment bankers by engaging in predatory lending and contributing to financial crises, have actually destroyed seven pounds of wider social, economic and environmental value for every one pound that they've created. That's a net loss from the, some of the wealthiest people in Western economies have sucked out seven pounds worth of value from that wider economy for every one pound they've contributed. And that is in contrast to, say, very low paid childcare staff workers who um, nurture the future generations and they add for every one pound that they are given, contribute between seven and nine pound fifty in value. And they are the values that this government is perpetuating, this misplaced emphasis and value on the people who are actually sucking wealth and from our shared collective contributory. They are sucking that wealth out and channeling it to themselves, and that is who is being valued by this government. And in New Zealand, it's really important, but this isn't just a foreign problem, this is an issue in this country. Currently, the top 5% of the population in New Zealand own over 50% of New Zealand's net worth. 50%, 5%, the top 5% in New Zealand own half of the net worth in this country. I don't believe that's justifiable. I don't believe that anybody has worked hard enough to own 5% to own 50%. And that the bottom 50% of New Zealanders own, let's see, take a guess, 5% of our shared wealth. And 20% of children in this country are living in inequality, in poverty. It does not have to be this way. The policies of this government create this inequality and it does not serve any of us because we all lose out through inequality. It shows up in higher crime rates, it shows up in a lack of recycling, it shows up in teen pregnancy rates, it shows up in a huge range of social measures that we all lose out from. If we would only take some sensible initiatives like a capital gains tax, increase the bargaining powers of workers to be able to get more of a fair claim on that wealth, to change our monetary policy, to put invest in regional economic initiatives, then maybe 
we could actually have a society where everyone had a fair share, recognising that it was a collective wealth to begin with. Jackie Dean.